Hey guys, I'm Nito King, and unfortunately, I think we're past the best part of Space Quest 6. It's all downhill from here, but we will press on because last time we spent the entire video just figuring out how to knock out these two guards so we could get to the door and make our way into the shuttle bay, steal a shuttle, and go looking for Stellar, who's not actually dead. Unfortunately, the door presents a bit of a challenge because the two buttons are really far apart. It's one of two buttons you must push simultaneously to open the shuttle bay door. You get a jump on senility. Open the shuttle bay doors, Hal. He insists on slipping that line in somewhere in every sequel. Your words cause that you consider saying hi until you remember. I wonder why you... Okay, enough putzing around here. What we're going to need, obviously, is either an extra hand or some help with pushing these buttons. And Roger's only got one friend on the deep ship left. Sydney, I have a favor I'd like to ask of you. Flame away, Roger. You know I'd give you my right appendage if you needed it. Funny you should say that, Sydney. I kind of have this situation where that very item could come in handy. Really? Well, I was merely saying that uh, metaphorically. You really are a great friend, Sydney. That'll come in real handy. I can't thank you enough, Sydney. Well, if you really are seriously in need of it, I suppose I could lend it to you. You will get it right back to me, won't you, Roger? Oh, yeah. You bet your nut flanges, Sydney. The anti-grav tables are specially designed to compensate for the ship's motions, minimizing drink spills while under enemy attack. Now you can drink an alien secretion during a hull breach and still not spill a drop. Yes, your eyeballs will implode within 2.3 seconds, but if and when you make it back from sickbay, your drink will still be there waiting for you. What can be said that isn't painfully obvious? Yeah, it's a very good question. Well, I was kind of hoping just to get him to come with me and push the button, but... As long as this arm gives me a little more reach... It's the right arm circuit Sydney was so kind to loan you. Lend or loan? It's a key with a little button thingy attached to it. the old unnecessarily complex door gag. In all the ships that I didn't take the time to look at in the demo, let's fix that. Ooh, a mint condition 57 Gateway Bel Air with mag thrusters, overhead lifters, and four pod barrels. This baby is a sleek streak Corsair with push button tranny and dual airbags. These balsa wood shuttles are really maneuverable, but they don't last two seconds in a phaser battle. Some guy wearing a Delco air filter on his face parked this shuttle. This Kiapian runabout strikes fear into the heart of the Japaxian Empire. It's a good compact shuttle for under 8,500 buckazoids. 
Some woman driver parked her shuttle here and contaminated the whole deep ship with these acid-bleeding, multi-jawed, exoskeletal aliens. And you had a really huge mess to clean up. Just for that, Kielbasa refused to validate her parking slip. What a beauty. A true museum-quality McKinley Ultramarine Blue Runner. It will be mine. Oh, yes. It will be mine. In your dreams. It's a standard Starcon shuttle built for speed and maneuverability. Unfortunately, with a budget of only 550,000 buckazoids, they had to leave off certain amenities, like airtight seals, decent shields, and restrooms. This Tiberian skimmer may look intimidating, but it's seriously underpowered. And that clear steel compound cockpit is particularly vulnerable to meteorites, baryon radiation, and large insects. You hear a disembodied voice saying, Remember your parking space, Luke. This tri-steel airlock strength security door prevents anyone from exiting or entering the shuttle bay without being properly screened. Ahoy, matey. Anyone aboard? That's some cherry flange you've got there. I like it. No, really. Hello? Okay, fine. Be that way. It's probably a repro anyway. Arr, matey! You do your best imitation of one of the pirates of Pestulon, but it falls on deaf ears. Any little genius teenage brats in there? No? Good. Let's keep it that way. Hey, who does your detailing? There's no response. You start to say something and then you... Is there anyone in there that won't eat me alive if I come in? From inside you hear a muffled, Nope. I'd buy that for a dollar. Anyone alive in there? There's no answer. Not a good sign. Avast ye! All hands on the poop deck! Speaking of poop decks, don't you have some janitoring to do somewhere? Is anyone in there? You hear nothing but oohs, ahs, grunts, and growls. Maybe whoever's inside is just trying to get a little wookie. You run your hand enviously along the wide, bulbous lines of the gateway. Nice, Nacalese. Now he pronounced that Nacelles in the demo. I'm pretty sure there's a joke there. It wouldn't be prudent to do that at this juncture. The hatch to the shuttle is locked, so you peek in the window. There doesn't seem to be anything in there except a rag that says, My father was betrayed at Kittimer, and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. You search in vain for a way to open the hatch to the shuttle. Oh yeah, real smart. Let's go poking around inside a pod that's probably carrying a half dozen miniature face-hugging, saliva-dripping, face-eating, exoskeletal alien piranha things. And while we're at it, let's split up so that we're all alone and defenseless, okay? Not. Careful, if you scratch this baby and someone finds out, you're going to need a positronic neural assist circuit to help you swallow your lunch. If you were aiming for the shuttle hatch, you missed. But if you just wanted to inspect the hull of the shuttle for microfractures and embedded particulate matter, you were incredibly successful. 
This might be the one. It looks familiar. Unfortunately, it's locked. You try to get into the Tiberian skimmer, but it's locked. Still, you know perfectly well you could get into it if you wanted to. You just don't want to, that's all. This shuttle appears to be triple locked with a security bypass and a redundancy cutoff circuit. Those rebels are so paranoid. All right, so that's pretty much everything to do with the ships in here. The shuttle's alarm is now deactivated. No, actually, I want to see what happens if I try to get in while it's active. The shuttle's alarm is now activated. Now we'll just unlock it. Excellent guess, Kreskin. Wrong, but excellent. Ah, so... The shuttle's... The alarm is the lock. Good to know. Anyway, let's get on with more stuff that we did in the demo. Although, it should be more interesting now that we're in the full game, right? Guess we'll start by taking a look around. The shuttle closet contains an EVA suit and helmet for those infrequent repairs. You've got way too much to do to spend time messing with that now. There's nobody in the closet to talk to now that Starcon has adopted the don't ask, don't tell policy. Cool. Well, I guess it's more interesting than it was in the demo. This compartment contains the Devalium Crystal subprocessor and main flux coupling. Yeah, we don't need to screw with that. But hey, we get to sit down! And look at this control panel. First, snag stuff. It's the pump you retrieve from the shuttle trunk. It reminds you of one of those hand pumps you use when the Astro Head plugs up. It's the most indispensable item in the universe. Duct tape. It's a tube of Elmo's Gluzol. You poke it and... Yeah, we'll find uses for that stuff later. For now, let's get this ship turned on. Lots of buttons, but there's the power button. And now I just gotta poke around a bit, I suppose. Uh, let's see, initiation is over there on the left. It wouldn't be prudent to do that at this juncture. I think I missed. Okay, uh, nav is offline. There we go, the intermix is not correctly set. That's the puzzle that stumped me when I played this game as a kid. And it says movies and games are not installed. There are Easter eggs associated with those buttons, but they're spoilers, so I'll show it to you later. Nothing happens. That button must not work at this time. Alright, one button left, I think. This button activates the manual override state. It is effective only while in flight. Huh, guess we'll look at the other buttons. These are navigational system readouts. No, it's a button. These are navigational system... Okay, I can't look at the button. ICD, and here we go. We need to set the chemicals and all those fuel tanks correctly in order to take off. And there is no clue anywhere in the game to tell you how to do it. The only thing that helps is if you click the confirmation code button a couple of times and look at the different codes that are available. You'll notice the words current code light up only when we've got lasagna selected. So that is the right code. And you have to notice that it's made up of the chemical symbols for four elements. You've got L-A-S-A-G-N-E which is lanthanum, sulfur, silver, and neon. So, 
once you figure that out, and the best clue you're going to get to that is that there is a periodic table in your popular Janetronics magazine, which you were probably staring at while you did the logic puzzle way earlier in the game. Set all that up correctly, and we can start. It's a bear of a puzzle. That bores me so. Unfortunately, we've got a retinal this scan. This is the photo triangulation system unit. It houses the optics as well as the print recorder and ejector. And it looks like I failed the retinal scan. Either Roger doesn't know how to look into a camera, or he doesn't have the authorization to take the ship. So we're going to need somebody's eye to get scanned and give me authorization. And of course, on my way out of the ship, there's one thing that you have to look at. This tank of emergency oxygen serves an incredibly important purpose. It ensures that the shuttle's hatch makes a neat hissing sound when it opens and closes. Now we get to hear it. It reminds me of Airplane 2. I don't know if you ever noticed when watching that movie. Assuming that you did watch that movie. They, they always make this hissing sound at the doors to open them, and the door makes exactly the same sound back at them. That was kind of cool. I wonder why they didn't do something like that in this game. That would have been funny. But anyway, we need an eye, and I can only think of one person who would be willing to help us, and happens to have a detachable eye. Wait, it's the alternate theme. Oh well, you'll get to hear more of that theme while I'm talking to Sydney, so... Let's get this over with, old friend. I really feel bad about this. Sydney, I kind of need another favor. I need one of your eyes. Pardon me, Roger. For a second, I thought you said you also wanted one of my eyes. I must have my auditory circuits diagnosed. Well, actually, Sydney, I, I could use one of your eyes. Are you certain, Roger? Well, I guess if you really need it. Oh, I do. I really do, Sydney. You're a mechanized lifesaver. You will return them soon, right, Roger? Oh, uh, of course, Sydney. Real soon. Listen, I've got a couple of things I've got to attend to. I'll see you soon. Uh, thanks, Sydney. As long as you say it will be soon, Roger. Oh, yeah. Uh, see you soon, Sydney. Circuit Sydney drinking game. Every time someone says the word soon. Roger. Are you here to return my structural loans? Soon, Sydney. Soon. Well, I do hope it's soon. People are starting to look at me in a strange manner. You got it, Sydney. I'll be back soon. Sydney won't be interested in talking to you any further until you return his body parts. Hey, you just got that from him. Perhaps you should use it first. Alright, well, if anyone's not dead from alcohol poisoning yet, let's move on. Now, I didn't even find the puzzles the first time that I went through the game. I think the first time I met Sydney, I just talked to him three times and got all these body parts and had no idea why. Obviously, it didn't take me too long to figure it out. Well... Aside from the whole not even being able to get to the retinal scan thing. Hey, yeah, guess what we get to watch again? Yeah, whoever mentioned unskippable animations in the thread really has a point. 
Well, at least in this game, the shuttle doesn't leave without you if you walk away from it while it's unlocked. Okay, so intermix set correctly. We're ready to pass our retinal scan. Let's get this show on the road. Although, where we're going, we don't need roads. Let's see if this sucker works. Hey! Here's your fish! Did I mention that that fish thing was a running gag? Because it's a running gag. animations it is pretty slick janitor Wilco what are you doing you have no authorization to take that shuttle. To make matters worse, you have launched into the middle of a super double reverse anti-anomaly. You will turn that ship around immediately and head back to the shuttle bay. Do you understand, Wilco? Bite me, Commander. What was that last transmission, Wilco? Uh, we're, um, having a little problem with the signal, sir. I mean, uh... With all due respect, sir, I did plead with you not to leave Stellar behind. Sir, I sense that something's just not right with that community. I don't believe Stellar is dead, and I just can't leave her there. I'm going to do this, sir, regardless of the consequences. Stellar saved my life not once, but twice. I owe her. Well, that was her own stupid mistake. I demand that you return it once, Wilco. If you do so and surrender now, your record will be taken into consideration during your disciplinary hearing. Oh, that'll help you loads. I'm sorry, sir, but I just can't. I have to do this. Wilco, you fool! Just then, the shuttle is sucked into the anti-anomaly. Communication with the deep ship has been disrupted. And almost immediately after the last bit of 3D animation, we get another one. It's kind of weird. It looks like the power's gone out. I guess we just have to turn it back on. Swell. There's not enough power to restart the engines. Huh. Well, I guess we're going to have to figure out how to deal with that and find our way out of this anti-anomaly and go rescue Stellar next time. I'll see you guys then, assuming that you keep coming back to watch more of this.